we may be talking to the next college football commissioner. Who knows? Great, uh, great day of coverage for you yesterday, man. Great work. Thanks for joining us this morning. Look, I appreciate it. You know that you can bring me in anytime and you can get an independent outside opinion on this show. And so I want to give it to you right now. I was listening about five minutes before you brought me on. And I just want you to think this out loud with me, okay? We're talking about NIL and we're talking about a lot of money being thrown around and I get it. But you do realize that you're sitting in a swanky new setup there, swinging a baseball bat <laughs> on live air, correct? Like, yes, this feels like either NIL money or cartel money, one or the other. He's Italian. But either way, yes. it looks really good. Uh, it is mob money, so we appreciate you watching <laughs> and being dialed well, in. But thank you very much. And uh, as always, it's great to, uh, to link up with you, man. What was, what was your reaction to Jimbo's day? What Texas A&M was able to accomplish? Because I know by your service – they are graded out as the highest rated recruiting class ever. And then his press conference yesterday afternoon kind of sending shots at everybody. Yeah, that was that was weird because we had him about 30 minutes before that. And I, I wanted him to talk about that one way or the other. Because, I mean, that's all anyone's mentioned of NIL, Texas A&M. And it's not like I've got a stack of evidence of anything on my desk, but I've heard the same things everyone else has heard. Sure. And so I just gave it to him. I think it's doing someone a favor. When you ask it the way I did, because all I said was everyone's got an opinion on NIL. What do you think about it? And what has it actually meant for your class? And, man, he was teed up. I think he had his press conference bullet points in front of him, Mm -hmm. and he just decided to give it a dry run with us. And, uh, you know, he said a lot, obviously. Um, A couple of shout-outs to our buddy Sliced Bread. So that was always good for him to get some recognition. (laughs) What a big day for Sliced Bread. (laughs) Or as we know him, Toast. No, he's, uh, he's, he's out of the way for a little while. But it was it was one thing to suggest that he's got a hardworking staff and, mm-hmm. you know, he takes it as an insult that people say that's solely due to money. I think it's a one thing that's a little bit different to say NIL has nothing to do with this whatsoever. I think that's a little far-fetched. Um, but – You know, when I asked the follow-up, I said, what is the misconception then? And that's exactly what he said. You know, he pushed back on the $30 million figure, and I get all that. But it's not only is it, I think, a little unrealistic to suggest NIL has nothing to do with this. You also don't need to go that route because as of this moment, it's okay legally for NIL to have something to do with this. It's a compliment. Like, they, they were prepared. They understood the project. I mean, when they when, when NIL was introduced, they were so far out in front of everybody that it's almost a compliment to what they yeah, they, they they pulled off yesterday. I think I think the same thing. I remember when the early signing day got put in, and a lot of folks were with a lot of trepidation. They were kind of approaching it, saying, "Well, how many kids do we really want to take in the early signing class?" Well, Georgia and Kirby Smart said, "Screw it." And they ran over the cliff yeah. with it. Well, that locked up a number one class for them. And then the next year, everyone was taking kids on early signing day, but they at least got one year's head start on everyone. And they used it to, as you just saw, eventually build the foundation for national championship. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know why someone would fight it mm-hmm. with such insecurity at the moment, because it is um, it's on the up and up, at least when it comes to what's allowed. Uh, at Late Kick Josh is where you follow him on social media. Got a great live show that comes on YouTube uh, Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday night, 7 o'clock Central Time. Uh, what would you think of what Brian Kelly pulled off in his first recruiting class at LSU? This is impressive to me. Um, it was impressive that they got Perkins, and he was there, and he committed live with us. But here's what I wanted to know. Right afterwards, I asked him about Brian Kelly because, I mean, a lot of folks have watched these viral videos of Brian Kelly. And it's a lot of 40 year old dudes who live in like (laughs) rural Wisconsin who have an opinion on it. I wanted to know what a kid who actually has the talent to compete at this level thought about it. And we heard this like two or three times yesterday. And I know you guys did too. Those kids who committed yesterday and some of them were very highly sought after. They said some form of what Harold Perkins said. And what Perkins said was, I had a perception of Brian Kelly. Like, I thought he was one way when I saw him at Notre Dame. But now I've been around him, and he's not the way I thought he was. To me, that speaks volumes because it validates what Brian Kelly's doing. See, it's not about a specific video. It's not about a specific thing he does on a recruiting visit. What it is about is understanding there was a playbook he used at Notre Dame, and it worked fine for him up there. I thought he was 
still massively underrated as a coach up there, given their limitations. But he was also sharp enough to know, I've got to formulate a new playbook down there. That doesn't mean I'm going to coach football differently, because he's not. Uh, what he does on the football field is proven. But he does understand recruiting is a different world at LSU, and therefore I've got to put different ornaments on my tree if I'm Brian Kelly. And he's done that. And it may make you cringe every now and then, or it may make you feel awkward every now and then. It doesn't really matter, because if it works, it works. Don't change a thing would be my advice. Just a few more minutes with Josh Pate here at Late Kick Josh on social media is where you find him. A&M won the day. They took the national storylines. We're buried in the LSU forest here. From your point of view, who else stood out yesterday and made some noise in this recruiting period? Uh, well, they're, they're the obvious. I mean, Alabama – look, here's what's weird. Alabama, had A&M not done what they did yesterday, Alabama would have one of the highest rated classes of all time. I think it's like the third highest rated of all time. So it's, it's somewhere way up there. But I also – I was looking elsewhere. Like, I was looking at what Texas did. Mm -hmm. They did as good on the line of scrimmage as you have seen them do in the modern era. And that is very, very needed out there, both now and in the future when they eventually move to the SEC. I thought it was miraculous. Listen to this now. This is going to sound like I'm just misspeaking, but I'm not. Oklahoma – had the highest rated class that they've had yesterday. Oklahoma wow. and Brent Venables, they come in and in a month's time, they ended up securing a higher rated class than Oklahoma had last year when Lincoln Riley was still there. So to me, that's fascinating. I thought Clemson at least silenced a little bit of the doubt out there. Because I can tell you talking to some people both on the administrative side and in the coaching world, there were people who thought Clemson was going to fall off a cliff. Now, we haven't seen them on the field this fall, but they finished with a number 11 class. Uh, I think they took 20 kids so far. And so that was it was a pretty good class from, from their standpoint. But also, here's the other thing that stood out. Mm -hmm. Mario Cristobal got in town like five minutes ago at Miami, and yet they had the highest rated class in the state of Florida. Wow. So you can look at it one of two ways. You can look at it, and man, they missed out on Shamar Stewart. Well, no, they, they really didn't because it's unrealistic to think they actually had a shot to begin with if you look at it from 50,000 feet. Yeah. But what he can say moving forward is that's how he can sell it. It's, look, we got here, and we locked down the number one class in the state even when we were brand new. So yeah. think about what we can do with a year or two years or three years and I don't think he'll be lying if he puts it that way. Yeah, big win for him coming into Louisiana and taking their best running back, Trevante Citizen, yesterday morning, pledged to the Hurricanes over Florida, LSU, uh, and Auburn. Uh, last one, Josh, I'll get you out of here. Do you think Jim Harbaugh is coaching college football or in the NFL next season? I think college football, but I don't know how to feel about that. I mean, listen, someone texted me last night and said, watch out for some Dan Mullen vibes here. Hmm. And what they were talking about is this time last year, Mullen tried to get that NFL job. And he didn't. Well, the problem is he also never fully checked back in at Florida. And as a result, you saw what happened this past year on the field. Now, Harbaugh, I think, loved the college game more than Mullen did. But it's really hard, dude, when you jump and then there's nothing there to catch you and you try and turn around and come back after everyone has seen you fail with that jump. That is a different dynamic in the locker room. Jordy, it is hard to ask people to go over the cliff for you when you tried to jump off of it yeah. uh, in front of them. Uh, real quick, a listener question before you get out of here. Hashtag Ask Josh from, Josh, uh, from John Quave says, uh, Josh, does Texas have the best O-line class in the country? Yes, I believe they do. We spent an inordinate amount of time on that later in the day yesterday because we had to fill because the package didn't run that mm. was supposed to be six minutes long. So, yeah, Ooh. we just improv for six minutes. But our guys there – um, who did a great job yesterday, man. We had a really, really good big it, staff working it. that show. Uh, but Will, like Steve Wilfong and Chris Singletary and Cooper Protegna and those guys, they tossed that around and went player by player. And even if I had never seen the Texas class before that moment, they would have gone a long way in convincing me. So I'm going to say yes, it is. Uh, at Late Kick Josh on all social media, very busy morning for him wrapping up yesterday's National Signing Day. We appreciate the minutes with us here this morning. We'll be touching base soon. Thanks, man. All right, brother. Have a good one. All right, man.